Hey, I'm Brian. Welcome to my garage Bible study. You might say, you're not in the garage this week. Man, I've been getting your questions like, where have I been all summer? This is a big part of where I've been all summer. I thought I'd give you a little tour before I gave you our little Bible study today. This is my rooftop tent, and this goes on my truck for when my wife and I go overlanding. We went for three weeks this week or this summer out to the Pacific Northwest. It was fantastic and all kind of stuff on this baby. These are called traction boards. If you get stuck in mud or in snow as we did, you can't get any traction. You stick these under your tires, take them off and stick them under your tires. I've got my fire extinguisher here in case something goes wrong, something goes bad. I've got up here, this is a canopy. This little guy here unzips and it comes, it's called a bat wing. It comes all the way around to protect you with rain or with sun and then of course I've got all kind of drawers that have all kind of my cooking stuff and I've got recovery gear because your truck's going to get stuck at some point so you've got to have the right straps and ratchets and all that kind of stuff and, and then we've got cooking gear and, and I also have water, this little hose, pressurized water I can squirt off my dog Peanut when she gets muddy or also fill our water containers right there or take a shower as well. And I've got a compressor right there that fills up my tires when they get punctured or when I actually decrease the pressure so it's a softer ride off, um, off road. So anyway, that's kind of my deal. And when I'm in the garage, I'm getting ready for this thing for my next adventure. I don't actually have one on the uh, books right now, but that's what I do. So I thought you'd be interested because you're asking questions. We actually do read your questions. Thanks for reaching in and reaching out to us and let's get going. We're going to take a look at the book of Matthew chapter 11 today. It's a, it's a verse that you probably heard a bunch of times, but I'm not sure if you really have heard what the detail is behind it. So I'm going to look at that today because this was all about actually resting. This was about getting to a different spot to think different things. It's been a very, very difficult for year, year for me, and I'm sure it's been a very, very difficult year for you as well. We talked our last Bible study about taking care of yourself, having a little fun, recharging your batteries. And so I want to pick up that theme right now with this classic teaching that Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Here's what he says. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Every time I hear this verse, I just want to go, ah, so nice. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy burdened, and I'll give you rest. Most of my life, I thought that if I wasn't burdened and stressed, I was outside the will of God. Because there's all these needs out in the world, and I'm supposed to pick up my cross and follow Him daily. And therefore, if I'm not burdened and stressed, then something's wrong. Because I'm not, I'm not carrying my fair share. Like the last thing I want to be accused of is being a slacker. When I used to work in construction as a grunt worker, I never wanted someone to accuse me that I wasn't filling the dumpster with as much rubble as somebody else. I never wanted somebody to think that, that I wasn't bashing plaster off of the old stuff we were demolishing as much as somebody else and shoveling into huge buckets and taking it down the dumpster. I, I never wanted someone to think that, that I wasn't working hard. That wasn't going to happen. And I kind of brought that to the faith. And I thought, okay, just like I'm working for Scott Federoff in, in construction, if I'm working for Jesus, it means it's being the same way. No one can accuse me of not being out there. No one can accuse me. In fact, if, if I'm not tired, if I'm not literally tired regularly, then I'm probably regularly not serving Christ. Uh, that'll work for you for a while. It really will. Especially the younger you are, the more it can work for you because the younger you are, you just got more natural energy and, and you have probably less demands on your time. The older you get, the more complicated your life is, and the more relational webs that you have, and the more different communities you have to be in touch with, and the more budgets you have to balance, and the more, I mean, generally the older you are, um, some ways your life is easier because you figure out life. In other ways, it's not because it's a little more complicated. But nonetheless, whether you're young or you're old, if you are tired, I want to tell you right now, God doesn't give you brownie points for being tired. And I also want to say, it's not a sin for you to be tired. Jesus doesn't say, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and repent for your sin. 
Now he says, come to me and I'll give you rest. Don't beat yourself up if you're tired or if you're burned out. Don't do it. Just go to Jesus. Try to get into a relationship with him. There's kind of three waves that I've gone over in the last two years. Uh, one wave I went through is, is the wave of a desert. We talked about that, what a spiritual desert looks like. I've been in a desert. And then I transitioned out of that into being tired, just, just tired. Like the desert, you feel distant from God. You don't know where he is. You have new doubts that you didn't have before. But you get strengthened at the end of it, but it's tough going through it. And I got out of that, but then I was just basic tired. I'm not tired anymore. Part of it is because I spent some time on this thing over this last summer. I'm not tired anymore, but still, I put up more the temptation or just being discouraged. Just discouraged about what people say, discouraged about things in my life I thought would be a different place, discouraged about the cantankerous nature of our culture. Just discouragement, right? And any of those things, if you're in a desert, if you're tired, if you're discouraged, it's just about always the same root cause or at least a complicating cause. And that is we're getting away from a day-by-day -day abiding relationship with Christ. And he says, come to me. So that's the first thing I gotta check out. When I'm in a desert, or I'm tired, or I'm discouraged, I gotta say, am I going to Christ? Meaning, am I living my life the way he wants me to live it? Or am I living my life the way other people want to live? Maybe I'm discouraged about something that's happening over here because I thought that thing was supposed to have this sort of growth metric and it's not having it, so maybe I'm discouraged. But that's been what I thought, but that's not necessarily what God thought. And then Jesus says this. This is really fascinating. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me because I'm gentle and lonely in heart. The apples to apples application that Jesus is talking about here is teachers, religious teachers, who are putting burdens on people that aren't meant to be there. When he says, take my yoke upon you, he's talking about people who are keep adding new laws and new rules and regulations that you have to follow. The ancient Jews, and still today, the Jews who are in Israel that I've interacted with, believe that when Moses came down from the mountain, he had two laws. He had the written law, which was on the tablets. We know as the Ten Commandments and other stuff in the first five books of the Bible. There's the written law, but then there was also the oral law. There are things that God told Moses that never got written down. And so Moses was basically the first rabbi. And then he went and he told the next person who told the next person. And you have these different rabbinical schools of thought as they branch out. They all have sort of a different, a different law here, a different law there, a different regulation. And they all believe it came from the mouth of Moses, the oral law. And so Jesus is saying, man, you just, we just can't keep up with all these traditions and all these things that aren't actually in the Bible that you're supposed to do. And by the way, this isn't just a, a religious thing. This is an American thing. The number of things that people tell you and I that we have to do will just wear you out. Just kids, for example. You got a, a kid, average parent spends five hours a week carting their kids around to different places and they feel like that's the law I have to do. I have to give them every single opportunity. You got to do that and you can't say this or you offend somebody. And if you're the first time somebody's upset, you got to apologize for it. I just learned that somebody as a social media influencer had to apologize for saying they like almond milk. People are coming all up in arms because almond milk is bad for environment because you're taking water from here again. I don't even know all the things, but now we're having to apologize for that. It's like you, you don't have to toe the line on everything or else we're going to get publicly shamed. Laws about how many there aren't in the Bible, like how many hours of sleep we should work. Laws about how often you should, how often you should work out. Laws about what your body should be like. Last time I took a physical, I, I tested out as overweight. Overweight because I'm outside the law of what a body image is. Of course, we know why. These guns, and these guns weigh a lot. Yes, it's important to know how much you should sleep. Yes, working out is fine, but just be careful. Notice, and notice next time how many things culture tells you that you have to do. And Jesus was talking to people who were worn out religiously that had rules for how to keep the Sabbath that they couldn't keep up with, that had rules for diet that they couldn't keep up with, that were even added to, that had rules for how you were supposed to walk, literally, these things existed. And it warped you, and Jesus says, come unto me. 
my yoke is easy, my burden is light. I'm going to make it really simple for you. And then it continues. My, you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Do you have rest for your soul? Do you feel at rest? Do you rehearse in your mind arguments that you might have tomorrow? Do you do that? Do you rehearse in your mind what you would do if you were the leader of your organization? Do you go looking for people online who are going to agree with you and make you feel good? I think the reason we do those things is because we're not at rest. I don't even want to come against any of those things right now. I just want to say if we looked at some of the things that we do, we might conclude it's coming out of a noisy spirit, an overburdened heart. And I want to encourage you to just, just, just shed the stuff that God doesn't want there. And what would that be? That would be anything that isn't in this book in black and white. Because that's what he says. And there is a lot of stuff in here, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of things we've globbed onto our faith that is not in here. And Jesus grieves over that. He wants you to come to him and gain rest for your soul. God, you're a liberator and you're a freedom giver, and I praise you for it. And I ask you to help us drop these things at your feet. I thank you. I thank you. You invite us to drop them at your feet, to take off the yokes that shouldn't be there, the weight that shouldn't be there, and trust in you. We trust in you. I trust in you. Thank you for being a good, restful God. Amen. We'll see you next time, maybe actually in the garage, in my garage Bible study.